rolling. Are you rolling? Yeah. Rolling. Good. Nice. All right. Begin. Today is Thursday, sixteenth, and we are interviewing. What is your name? Marie. Neal. Miss Marie Neal. Where do you live in Arlington? I lived on Hillside Avenue. So it's up here, off of Park Ave. How did you get to school? Good old walking. When you got to school, did you meet, know any kids, a lot of the kids? Yeah, my neighbors. We all went, everybody in the neighborhood came here, if you, whatever age you were, you know, the seventh, eighth, and ninth. And in those classes, how many kids were there? Probably about 30. For those classes, how long about were they? 45 minutes, I think, but that's going way back. After teaching here with the, t also, times all confused. And in those classes, did you use typewriters? No. Nope. Uh, there weren't typewriters here. I, t I did use a typewriter at home. That's cool. Were the students here, uh, what foreign languages? French and uh, Latin were the only two, and if you took Latin, you took it for eighth and ninth grade. In French, it was eighth and ninth grade also. But if you didn't take Latin here, you couldn't take it at the high school. Ah. Who was the principal when you were here? A. Henry Audison. Where were, um, were there assistant principals? Yeah. Mr. Glenn Wright and, you know, when I was teaching also, there was um, Edmund Mahoney. And I oh. believe his son is teaching here now. Ah. He became principal later. How long did you teach for? I taught in Arlington, let's see, 36 years. And how long, at what age did you join Audison? Like, come talk uh, as a staff member, I joined the Audison at 20, 24. And when you were a student, how old were you? When I was a you? student, it was seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, so I was 12 when I started. Uh, that was 1954 to 57. Did you ever interact with the principal or his or her assistants? Oh, yes. Only once. And I was shaking in my boots. I was a ninth grader, and I got called to the office. <laughs> and it was like, and Mr. Otteson had a voice that was way down here, and you could hear him coming. And it was like, a, and all it was was I had too many sewing classes, would I be willing to give up a sewing class so someone else could have it? Uh, but I didn't know that, and I'll tell you, I was not too happy. <laughs> were there assemblies? Yes, there were. Um, on Memorial Day, there was always for Memorial Day. Uh, I'm not sure of the others, but we also, as I gave them the picture, we also did um, play productions, musicals. What were the assemblies like? I really can't tell you. I, my memory doesn't go back that well. Uh, did you use ch desks and chairs like we do today? Were they nice? They were the old-fashioned wooden desks and chairs. They were stationary. They did not move. Uh, was it hard to earn high grades? Uh, if you look at my report card, yes. <laughs> Was there recess? What would you do during that no, recess? No, we didn't have recess. The uh, only time you have would be equivalent to recess would be phys ed. Uh, what was phys ed like? Uh, the girls were one. It was divided. The gym was, I guess from what I overheard you guys calling it, it's called the wood gym. That was the gym. And it was divided in half. And the girls were on one half and the boys were on the other. Uh, and that. And I'm... We didn't do much outdoors. Uh, what were your favorite memory or memories in junior high? Hmm, favorite memories. Probably the um, musicals. What were the musicals like? Uh, very, very simple compared to today. Uh, um, I mean, we did the uh, background, built the uh, sets and so forth. That's cool. Yeah. What were the lunches like? Well, then, uh, that's an interesting question. I was told to make sure I told this. My sisters, I'm one of 11. 
all of us went here. And my sis, I was telling my sisters yesterday, it was coming, and they said, make sure you talk about the turkey dinner. Now, being one of 11, we didn't buy our lunches too often, but the one lunch we mother wanted us to make sure we had was the turkey dinner. Um, and it was, they cooked the turkeys in the ovens. And in fact, that wall there, I think, is the back of where the ovens were. And that, because the uh, kitchen, uh, the, the lunchroom was your tech room back over as you come in the building. What was the library like? The library like. was a little tiny classroom. Wow. And that's it. And it's um, not that many books. And in fact, that was like that all the way up through, I want to say, actually almost the 80s. Almost into the 80s. Was there a specific genre that they had of books? Or was there encyclopedias? And other than that, there were some, but I, I've used the local library before I used uh, that one. Were there school rules? Oh, there were school rules. Uh, girls had to wear skirts. Um, the boys had to wear pants, no dungarees. They had to wear a tie and a shirt. Uh, let's see what else was there. Oh. We, the girls, we had a little thing that we used to do. We, and well, I don't know whether it was Christmas time. We would put bells on our sneakers. That was a no-no. We had to, we'd get caught right away. Um, it, the one, one year, the, maybe it was when I was in the ninth grade, um, petticoats were the thing under skirts. And of course, that would make your skirt stand out. And it was like, no more, because walking up the stairs was not, oh, that's something they don't, wouldn't know about. There were up and down stairs. You could not go up the downstair staircase. So this staircase right here was a down staircase because it led to the lunchroom. The one over here would have been an up one, so when you're leaving lunch, you could go up it. But don't you dare cross things. And I, I have to say, I was a meanie about that. As a teacher, my room was right there at the bottom when I first started here, and it was noisy. So if you were doing the, going the wrong way, it made a difference. Were there students who didn't know any English? Yes, they must have been. Uh, I'm not sure that I remember them in when I was in junior high, but definitely when I was teach when I began teaching. When the, um, when you were a student here, how big was the building compared to now? Uh, this whole section from here over was non-existent. Ah, uh, that's a lot. Um, we did have the wood gym, and you went that way. So this whole section is brand new. Well, new. Do you have any painful memories of your junior high here? Painful? Sad. We lost, my ninth grade year, we lost a friend. Oh, that's sad. And that. Uh, but other than that, most of my, they were good memories. I still have, and one of your questions, I guess, was about, do you still know anyone from it? I have a very good friend who has been a friend since I was in seventh grade, eighth grade. That's cool. Um, what was the dress code for teachers and students? For teachers, it was just as bad as for students. I will never forget. I had, this was teaching day now. I had, a, what did they call them? Culottes on, of that. And you could not tell it wasn't a skirt. Mr. Otteson came up to me, I was in the gym, came up to me and said, Marie, I know this doesn't apply to you, but the school committee has said no pants, no matter any form in school. Now, I'm standing there. Te technically, I had on pants. So I'm standing there, not moving, so that he wouldn't see the legs. And 
Oh, that's okay. Thank you. And needless to say, my wardrobe changed from that. But they, there was a dress code as far as that. And what I told you earlier about the boys, that was up through probably the late 70s. Oh, wow. And uh, before they started letting boys wear dungarees and no uh, tie and whatever. Mm. And the girls started to wear pants. The hardest thing was getting to school, walking to school in skirts in the winter in the snow. That was, at least the boys had pants on. So could the boys ever wear shorts there? Was it oh, no. Oh, nobody could wear shorts. Ah. So that was, and, well, in the gym. Uh oh. Their uniform, you know, basketball. And the, oh, yes, I forgot that dress code. The, oh, jeez. Uh, we had, the girls had little blue, dressy type, I mean, what do you call it, Jim's, gym outfit, and it was a skirted, it had bloomers underneath, and that, I don't know what the boys' outfit was, I, we hated ours, actually I had to wear one all, that type of thing all the way through college. Oh, wow. Uh, what sports did you usually I I preferred softball and basketball. Was there any other sports? What uh, what other was there was um, there was a JV, I guess it was called JV basketball that I coached the cheerleaders for, uh, that the boys actually went to other junior highs and played against. Um, that, I I think there was football for the boys. And actually, as far as for the girls, there wasn't much in the town other than there was the CYO teams for girls. The girls had to go elsewhere. The boys got the teams. So um, were you always in the wood gym? Or did, could you go outside? There? We didn't go out that much. I don't remember. The were lunches always in the cafeteria or were they outside? Oh, no. They were always in the cafeteria. And the girls sat one end of the cafeteria, and the boys sat at the other end of the cafeteria. Never the twain shall meet. Uh, so um, what classes did you have? English, health, science, math. Where's my report card? I can tell you which ones I had. Um, the usual. I mean, there wasn't any much different. Other than uh, seventh grade, oh, it was different, actually, when I think of it. There were no computers or tech courses. Girls took cooking, sewing in the seventh grade, cooking in the eighth grade, and either sewing or cooking in the ninth grade. The boys took print shop, eighth grade, woodworking, seventh grade. And I'm not sure what the choices, they, probably those were the two choices in the uh, ninth grade. In that. What extracurricular activities or clubs was there? Robert? There was the uh, glee club. And actually, that's all I remember because I was active in it. Did the school fire drills, did anything scary ever happen to the school? Not that I remember. Not while I was a student. And I don't, rem don't remember as a teacher there was. About it. Okay, thank you. I was going to ask, what is Glee Club? Oh, musical, um, singing. In, in other words, I couldn't make, uh, if you couldn't make the prom special, what do they call them? What, like we had, did have a group of 12 girls that sang a whatever. If you couldn't make that, Glee Club was for everybody. So we put on a music um, Christmas chorus. Oh, that's probably what you'd call it is chorus. We called it Glee Club. I was going to ask for the turkey dinner. Was that Thanksgiving? Was that Christmas? I want, I, my sisters kind of said it was Christmas. I thought it was Thanksgiving, but it was a full cooked meal, stuffing and all, and they did it, and it smelled wonderful in here. They did that up through, I would say, the, the beginning of the 70s. 
and that. Um, they did. They cooked the food completely here. And my mother, actually, my mother worked in the cafeteria. In that, this this place had a lot of us. <laughs> And my poor brothers and sisters went through school here while I was teaching here. I, I, oh, yeah. They did one brother in particular to this day says, I could kill you. <laughs> because if he'd get in trouble, there was one teacher who would send him to me. And the thing was, they had been told, do not contact me, that I am not their parent. My parents are the ones that you should speak to. If he does something wrong or whatever, that's who you talk to. And um, this one teacher didn't believe in that. Just one more question. Um, yeah. Were um, in classes where the boys separated from the girls? No. Mostly and we would put alphabetically. And were there any black students or colored students? I mean? When I was... Um, when I was a student, no, oh, I don't remember even through high school no. that there were any. In that, in fact, I, I'm high school. I'm a hundred percent sure because I'd see them in my yearbook, which I still have. So, wow. and that. that's about it. No. Do, do you have any other memories that we haven't you know, pulled out yet? That's a, that's, see, you know, you put me on the spot that way. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I might have had. Oh, you would. The question about um, detention and so forth that was on, oh, yeah. on the list. Um, yeah, they did have detention and so forth. What did I put? Um, they was just kept after school and so forth. But um, I do remember, oh, I know something. And also, at some point, can you just tell that story? Oh. Okay. Um, after the first, the Challenger, a, um, what do you call it? Crash? Um, explosion. <laughs> explosion, thank you. After the Challenger, the uh, NASA set up a thing, a contest around the country to name the replacement uh, orbiter. And it was set out to the schools for the kids to come up with a project and a name. And it had to be a multi-task um, thing. In other words, it couldn't just be Oh, this is the name, and we'll write a little story. You had to have something to go with it. And there were two levels, elementary and secondary. And the class here at the Audison, which was one, my class, along with a Miss, um, Nancy, I can't, Mrs. Crasco, we worked with the kids on it. And um, they came up with, and I don't remember, this is awful, I don't remember the name of the they gave it because Endeavor won, but um, we won for the state. Out of all of the high schools and junior highs in the state, we won for the state. And from the letters I got from other schools around the country, we actually probably did very well as far as the rest of the country. And there's a book somewhere in the library, we haven't been able to find it yet with the NASA published that has the whole thing that the kids wrote in a description of the project. And it was a quilt. And that's another thing. Somewhere in the building there's a quilt or somebody has it. But this is the plaque I was sent because it was my students that did it. Wow. And uh, it's a little bit scratched up because it's been moved around a few times. but. And, uh, Oh, yeah. I was teaching here. I had been teaching here quite a while. Do you have some memories about that? Of when he died? Just of how the school reacted? Other than us all going, the school closed down. We all went to the wake down the thing. The funeral, um, actually the funeral was at St. James. Well, St. Athanasius now. But um, in, 
it was mobbed. And then all of the teachers, we all went out, and it was somehow out by the old mill, because we stopped at the old mill restroom coming back, out by um, that way. So it was quite a while. It, it was a shock because he had been fine. We came in on, I almost want to say, a Monday morning, and he had died overnight. And that's another the hard thing that happens when you're teaching is you lose friends, but you also lose students. Um, I had one year, two of my students died, one the year after I had her. And these were seven, well, she was an eighth grader and the seventh grader died. She had uh, an allergic reaction to um, peanuts. And she couldn't, the, her friends, she was downstairs in the basement with her friends, and they couldn't get upstairs to get the EpiPen fast enough. And I got a call that she had died on a Friday night. And, that, and I'll tell you, that was, that's a rough thing to go through. Yeah. And it was rough for the kids. And I still know some of the kids from the first students. Okay. Any more? I'll take the number. Oh.